In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a no copyright sound style audio spectrum in After Effects. For this, you'll need a Trapcode form plugin. I'll be using no copyright music for YouTube policy reasons. You can use whatever song you like. Once you have it imported into the project, drag it and drop it onto the new composition icon. That'll create a new composition that is the same length as your song. Let's rename it to music to know which one's which. Then drag the music comp and drop it onto the new composition icon once again and rename it to Spectrum. By doing that, your music will already be in the Spectrum comp. So we can just proceed to right click new solid. And let's name this Spectrum, then click OK. Head over to the effects and presets and search for form, RG trap code form. Add this to the Spectrum solid layer. Then let's open at the base form. Set size to XYZ individual. Set size X and Y to 400. Set size Z to 200 and particles in X to 300 and also for the Y 300. We don't need any particles in Z, set it to 1. Let's close the base form tab and head over to the spherical field. Open sphere 1, set strength all the way to 100 and radius to 300. That'll give you a nice sphere. Also drop the feather to 40. Then close up the spherical field tab and head over to the fractal field. Here let's set effect size and opacity both to 2 and displacement to 100. Let's move a bit forward on our timeline to find a better frame. Then close that up and open up Audio React. Set Audio Layer to Music. Then open up Reactor 1 drop down. Open Map 2. We have different presets here. Let's select Fractal for the first one. Now by changing the strength value you can see the higher we go the more distorted the audio spectrum gets. Let's set it to 20 so it's nice and clean. Then open up Reactor 2 drop down. Click on the map 2 and select sphere 1 size. You can see the sphere got bigger. Let's decrease the strength to maybe 30 so we get a smaller size. And that's how our spectrum looks at the moment. You can scroll through to see that. Then let's open that particle tab, select color, and you can choose whatever color that you like. Yeah, I'm going to select the purple color and click OK. Then you can preview your spectrum, but keep in mind that this effect is quite heavy and you might want to lower the resolution. So it'll be extremely slow depending on the system. But either way, once you're happy with how this looks, we can proceed to right click the spectrum solid, select pre-compose, make sure removal attributes is selected, then click OK. Then let's input the photo for our background. I've got this photo from unsplash.com. Drag it to the timeline, drop it below the spectrum. Then press T for opacity and set opacity really low to maybe 20%. Then head over to the effect and presets and search for Gaussian Blur. Add this to the photo. Set amount to 8 to make our photo slightly out of focus. Then select the spectrum layer on the timeline and drag it to the right. Then we can add some text on the left side that is currently empty. Let's select the type tool. And for the font I'm using Cafe Nero M54. I'll leave a link in the description. It's a free font. Select that and type whatever you like. I'm going to type Smirtimber Graphics Edition. A bit random, but it will do for the tutorial. Then select the text and place it as you like. And you can, of course, resize it and then place it accordingly. And one thing we're missing here is the glow effect on our audio spectrum. Let's go to the effect and presets and search for glow, the good old stylized glow. Add this to the spectrum layer. Set glow threshold to 100% so it does not affect the colors of our audio spectrum. Also set glow radius to 300 to get a subtle glow around the audio spectrum. Also let's add drop shadow to our text. Go to effect and presets and search for drop shadow. Under perspective, add this to the text. Set distance to 0, softness to 20. Then select the drop shadow and press Ctrl D to duplicate it. And set softness to 100 for the second drop shadow. That'll create a better separation between the text and the background. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you found this video useful and learned something new, please give it a like. I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, peace out.